Jay was really uh, very prolific at that time. He was writing songs called Fresh Garbage. I mean, a really interesting riff and uh, a, a funny, uh, we moved into the Topanga Canyon as a band, Barry Hansen, John Locke, myself and Jay Ferguson moved into You, li this you lived together? Yes. Good God. Yeah, right, de right off, uh, but close to the uh, Discovery Inn. Uh, and uh, but those were some good times. They were great. And, and, and the, the I, funny thing about this move was we found this house. It was very affordable. And we get there and the, the previous tenants had tr literally trashed the place. They, they didn't, they just uh, hoarded their, their trash and garbage. So the house was filled with, with garbage. It gives the expression, write what you know, or write about what you know, exactly. a whole new meaning. <laughs> exactly. We had to clean for a week to make the house livable. There you go. There was, there was the inspiration for that song, clearly. Exactly. Exactly. Fantastic. Fantastic. So the only song that Randy wrote for, for the first record was actually Taurus. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Taurus for a moment, since you brought it up. So um don't know exactly what the year was, but um, my co-producer is going to feed me information. 2014. Thank you, Michael. So in 2014, there was a lawsuit correct. Uh, that you were a part of, correct? Yes. Where, um, and it was from Randy California's estate, and correct? And, and yourself and, and uh, uh, other members of, of the group, I'm assuming. And they, yeah. they, uh, well, let me see how, how should I put this. It's, it, it, it has to do with the song called Stairway to Heaven by a band called Led Zeppelin, who you guys toured with. Okay. And they opened for you, I believe, correct? Yes. I mean, there were a lot of other bands that you, you guys toured with. But so, so and this is an interesting story because, of course, many of us, including myself, was following this in the news a few years ago. And uh, the song Taurus, it's called Taurus by the band Spirit. If you guys want to Google that and, you know, listen to it on YouTube. And there's a riff in there that is, uh, well, shall we say, in my opinion, um, somewhat similar <laughs> to a, uh, a the, the riff in uh, um, Stairway to Heaven um, played by Jimmy Page on guitar. And um, you guys tried to get added to the credit of the song and uh, you wanted to get co-writing credit and it went on for the lawsuit went on for several years um it was ultimately unsuccessful um but it was you know it gave a lot of attention to um that particular riff which is very recognizable to say the least um and oh yes there was this thing about that you that they couldn't play the song in court is that is that right that's exactly so can you can, were you so tell us a little bit of, from your perspective how you saw this like how did you experience this okay so you're right you've got it uh correct i was asked uh I forget the guy, the journal from Bloomberg News, uh, Silver was his last name. He, he's an Ameri American guy, but he was living in Italy. He calls me up. He says, I'd like to do an interview and um, with you. And may I come to your home? And I, and I said, of course, I would, that would be great. And he comes here and he brings... Um, this book, it'll probably show up as backwards. I don't know where this might be what we put on YouTube. <laughs> yes. This is called Get the Lead Out. Mm. And it's by Denny Somak. S Denny Somak, yes, I know Denny. Yep. So mm -hmm. he compiled this this book. And so there's I he brings this and plays for me on my computer. The Howard Stern episode where Danny, <laughs> Danny, is 
talking about this? And I'm going, and you have to understand that when I left, Jay and I left Spirit, it, what we did, left and, and it wasn't, it was a, it was a tough time. And we, uh, the group was really uh, not getting along well. We, Randy was a little, um, he had fallen off a horse and had a head injury and he was a little erratic and it was difficult. Uh, we can't, he canceled a, a Japanese tour the night before we, we were to leave. And I thought, oh no, this is, so when I left Spirit, I, I, I you know, I knew that we all knew that Brand, that uh, the uh, Led Zeppelin had heard Taurus. We played it on stage. They heard it. We, I mean, we, we hung out. Uh, we, we, you know, we, that we were not exactly best buds, but we knew each other. We played snooker and Blackpool uh, after a, a spirit show. So I, we knew that they were aware, but I didn't really feel that attached to it. But when- Snooker is like billiards, right? It's, but yeah, but it's a like little pool. more- It's like a pool game, only more rustic. <laughs> the, the cues are like sticks. And uh, it was just, I guess what I wanted to say is that I didn't really give it much of a thought. I knew that, that Randy, that they had borrowed it, but I thought that was Randy's business. I thought, well, but then after Randy pa passed away and he was no longer here way too early and he and I always got along well. And I, and, and I always encouraged him to kind of step away from spirit and be a solo artist so that when spirit uh, would reform, it would be special rather than being there all the time. But he couldn't, uh, anyway, that's, that's a side story. So here this interview comes in and I realized that, oh my God, this uh, Denny has, has the timeline and he's, and he says, oh, well, this is when Led Zeppelin was jamming on fresh garbage. This is you know, and he's he's got it, and and, and all the other songs that uh, Led Zeppelin borrowed and and settled with, and I thought, oh, this is about the oh, if there ever was a time to get Randy at least credit, this would be the time. He's not here; he can't make his case for himself. This is this is obviously here for a reason, and I thought that I could bring the suit. So I said, I got on the phone to my friend um, Francis Malafi, who's the lawyer, who uh, had done me some favors pro bono, and I said, Francis, I got some, I got something <laughs> <laughs> to check out, and he got here, and it it. it but that, that's the beginning, that's the, the genesis of the whole thing. Mm. And I just really wanted to kind of give Randy his credit. Mm. And it mm. turns out you're absolutely correct uh, that uh, I could not bring the suit, but his Randy's estate could. And uh, Mick Skidmore, who's the executor of Randy's estate did bring the suit, Jay and I, uh, we're friends of, of the, the suit. And so we testified with those guys. I mean, they were all, we were all in, in court together and, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. but you're right that the uh, jury could not, they heard what they called the deposit copy of the copyright, which was this funky, uh, it was just the bass notes on the guitar and which and what we're talking about as far as Led Zeppelin because is this is the very, the introduction to the song, yeah. so it's that beautiful the uh, arpeggiated descending thing chordal thing, mm -hmm. and uh, the first the the melody uh, the vocal melody for uh, Stairway to Heaven is 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 John's uh, harpsichord solo. So what you hear on the deposit copy that the uh, jury got to listen to was just the uh, acoustic guitar and all those halftone uh, descending things and 
the, the first few notes of the harpsichord solo, which winds up being what the vocal uh, melody mm -hmm, initially mm -hmm. was. So <clears throat> it, and, and they never got to hear it. Actually, the, the, even the, in the multiple trials, I think, I think maybe Francis got a little outlawed. I'm not sure about that, but <laughs> I don't. Uh, it, I don't. It's, uh, it, it's such a, you know, it's a tricky thing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there are only 12 notes, at least in the Western world. You know, if you go further east, you know, there's maybe more a few hundred, few hundred more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're right. Yeah. It's, it's a motif. It's, it's, um, mm -hmm. there are commonly, others. commonly used. But, but I'll tell you what it was, was when you, and I think you referenced this, when you hear Spirit's performance on the record of Torah's, the vibe. The, that's what, what, what that's what I would I yes and I, I totally yeah go ahead. <laughs> with, with the feeling that it, that is evoked from that yeah and, and the, the the delicate, uh, you know it's kind of a wash and echo. Uh, Spirit had the beautiful Marty Page uh, string and orchestra arrangement, so it was very yeah. very moody. It was a very it's the mood. That's exactly it. And I remember when this was happening a few years ago, and I listened to it. And, you know, and here I am a few years later talking to you about it, which is kind of cool. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, thanks to our mutual friend, Ann Layton. And uh, uh, so, so the, so the, the, uh, you know, I remember thinking, yeah, I, I, I get why they would, you know, at least have a conversation about this, you know, and how far it goes, it's always whatever, that's very subjective. Um, and I listened to it again today. And, uh, and, you know, that's, that's, and that's the word I would use is the mood, you know, and, you know, when you're that, when you're in an environment with, with, you know, when you're on the road, and there's other musicians, and you're, you're hanging out, and you're playing, and you're, uh, you know, jamming, and people jam on each other's songs, and, you know, you start playing, you know, a lot of things happen, I think, subconsciously. You know, and, uh, uh, you know, how do you how do you deal with that? You know, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, you did you dealt with it in in uh, in a way that that uh, is possible. All right. This is like this is how our legal system is set up. But when it comes to to the music business as a whole and the amount of of lawsuits, you know, that are still going on and, and about how the industry has uh, has evolved over the years and we're seeing a repetition of all of this now with streaming you know yeah. like how do you deal with rights management how do you pay some people and not pay others you know when when spot of companies like spotify are pulling in billions yes. you know and how do you distribute that only amongst forty three thousand people you know i mean i think that's the number right now you know and you know i've had uh, hundreds of thousands of streams on spotify on uh, Spotify and, you know, millions on YouTube, but YouTube is even worse, <laughs> you know, when it comes to paying, you know, so, um, but it, it, it is so, uh, it's so complicated, you know, so it's very interesting to hear your side of this, or, you know, from someone that was in that courtroom to, you know, so, so when this, when this ended, what did you take away from it? Like, how did it make you feel? And, and, did you have hopes or did you, you know, how did you deal with it on an emotional level as a writer and as a musician that was there? 